The original machine is crazy fast beast with a top speed more than 400 km per hour. However, I more admire engineering and design. I chose kit from Tamiya in 112 scale and without doubt it is again another masterpiece with excellent details. In the box is lot of plastic parts, however also rubber tires, pipes, metal spring and lot of small screws. Nice are also parts covered with a chrome finish. In any case, I think the best part is this front fairing molded from one piece. Unfortunately, the H2R is a very complex machine made from a lot of different materials like tricky black chrome and cardboard finish. Therefore, if you want to build the model correctly, you need a few extra parts. Primarily this decal sheet with a carbon texture. It will be fun because the shapes of the fairing are quite complex. And if you are an enthusiast modeler like me, you can buy super detailed set with lovely details. However, the price of the set is also lovely. So that was a short presentation of the kit and extra parts. Now let's begin with the model assembly. I cut out plastic parts from sprue with sharp side cutters. You mostly do not need to worry about the rest of plastic because the cut is clean and straight. I use for gluing of plastic mostly one superfine glue because the application is in the most cases straightforward. I like how all parts fit perfectly because honestly I am not a big fan of filling, sanding or rescribing. I rather play with the colors and details. There is a pronounced mold line on the tire so I remove it with a 150 grit sandpaper. A similar issue has all plastic parts, it can be time consuming to clean all of them, but I think it's worth it. Hopefully nowadays exist a cool tools which can help with a cleaning difficult and hardly accessible plastic parts. Another issue what I cannot forget to cover is pinholes. They are from automatic molding machines which remove sprue from metal mold. And I use for this purpose pre-diluted putty so I can easily apply it with a paintbrush to the right place. I mentioned before that the kit has beautiful details, unfortunately a lot of them are simplified or missing. This kit is primarily for less experienced modelers, so relatively you can build without painting and after a few hours. In my case a few weeks. I found a lot of photos of the original machine and by them I tried to modify parts just a little bit. A handy tool for this type of work is microelectric drill with a different milling cutters. The result is a little bit better but also without additional support more fragile, so be careful. This plastic tube doesn't look nice, so I cut it out and replace it with a plastic profile of the same diameter. Let's replace some plastic parts for better ones. An excellent example is this oil cooler. Original part from the kit is again very simplified and dull but easy. I need 25 pieces or so to make new one. I use for gluing resin or metal parts ordinary super glue. As you can see the resin part is slightly taller, therefore I need to remove excess resin with a sandpaper and sharp blade. There are also tiny screws, the size of one is less than 1mm, but after my Bismarck model it is easy peasy lemon squeezy. In comments you recommend me for handling small parts wax pencil, it is an interesting tool and I found it useful, especially for this motorcycle model. After one hour later, I have finally assembled the same part which was in the kit, but the new one is better. At least I hope. 
Okay, you can expect more details like this, because I have the whole set for this. In any case, before painting I need to remove all imperfections, which I cannot see on plastic. Therefore I spray one layer of a grey primer, which has a nice matte finish. You can easily see scratches, pinholes, moon lines or see more. Problem with a simplified kit. The fuel tank has only top shell. Probably you wouldn't see this after full assemble, but I can let it like it is. So I try to sculpt internal construction from epoxy party. Unfortunately, the original fuel tank has a classic and easy drop shape, but quite complex design with gaps and protrusions. If you decide to follow the steps, do not forget that it must fit with the engine. I let the epoxy party dry adequately and then I sculpt the rest of tank. In the end I fill and sand imperfections. I found a similar problem also with the air intake tube to the turbo. I think in this condition does not make a lot of meaning. However, in this case is correction easier. I glue a thin plastic board and fix the position with the electrical clamps. I make details more pronounced with a black wash. for painting is this metallic green central frame. I tested a few metallic green colors, but the result was not smooth enough, mainly because in the color are large silver particles. Therefore I chose more difficult technique, but for the scale more realistic. So first I paint the frame with a black primer, and then I spray silver color. Silver paints usually have a microscopic silver particles, so perfect for small scale models. And the last step is transparent green color. At the first glance I thought that the Tamiya has too much toxic shade, but on some photos is this shade very similar. 
Honestly, I like it less pronounced, therefore I chose green from AK. I spray 5 layers with a highly diluted color. Remember my last model of Suzuki where I modify braking disc from plastic. This time I don't even try and throw them instantly into the spare power box. You never know when it'll be handy. You can't of course use one plastic part, but why not make a new one again from 26 pieces and this time you need three of them. It looks that it does not worth it, but the significant advantage is the final finish after disc abrasion. I attach the disc to a microelectric drill and with a sandpaper I imitate scratches after breaking. The result looks pretty cool and shiny. Now I need to imitate chrome or polished steel on details. The painful way is to mask them with a masking tape and spray details with an airbrush. The easy way is to use a humble paintbrush and some good chrome color. I use outstanding enamel chrome from Model Master. Also lovely is chrome from Molotov, but I found easier for application with a brush Model Master. At least it isn't aggressive for lacquer or acrylic base color. In the kit are small screws and screwdriver. This way you can nicely fix parts, strongly without glue. Ok, now the funny and relaxing part. The best detail from the extra set is this chain. It has more than 200 pieces. I glue 100 pins to the holes with a super glue. Hopefully in the set are spare parts, so you don't need to worry if you lose a few of them.
I mentioned 200 pieces, so you also need to glue 100 chain segments from the both sides. Lovely. Just for a comparison, one plastic part from the kit and new one from a few more. And I forgot to mention at the beginning that I also purchased braided line, which nicely imitates wires and tubes on the real motorcycle. So that was a stay forward, sometimes even detail set is not detailed enough. No, just kidding. But really, this brake clutch fluid tanks should be transparent, at least on the real one. So I merely use only cap and the rest I made from clear plastic sprue. Then I imitate oil with a transparent yellow color.
and also I attach the braided line which I used before, but the larger diameter and plug. I promised you that I would use decals with a carbon texture, so now it's time to try them. But first I must prepare parts for them. The carbon is mostly black, so I paint pieces with a black base and cover them with a clear lacquer varnish. The decals nicely slide on this type of a surface. And I must do not forget to clean all imperfections. I never tried carbon texture before, so I am happy that I chose such an easy model for learning. Especially shapes of the front fairing are not difficult at all. I rather tested decal setter and softer from different brands. I found out that the microset and red microsole are less aggressive, and therefore I will have more time for smoothing all edges. I moisten decals in hot water, I prefer something like 50 or 60 celsius. The decals are then softer and therefore you can easily transfer them on the model. I gently moisten decal with a microsole, which partly dilutes varnish, on which is texture printed. However, even so, it's still stiff and rigid. It can help if you heat decals with a hairdryer. I bought some cheap one for a few dollars and work perfectly. It becomes soft and flexible after a few seconds. Now I only smooth edges with a soft paintbrush or cotton swab. You can again apply more microsol liquid. I repeat the whole process until I'm satisfied with the result. Ok, one down, 83 to go. These ones are only for the top side of the front fairing, and honestly it took me 3 days to apply all decals. And I didn't find it amusing. But I guess it worth it. In the end I make a minor corrections on the decals joints with a black acrylic color. I know that chrome on plastic part is nice, but I almost every time remove it, because there are mold lines which you need clean. The rest of chrome you can remove chemically with chlorine. Now you can see noticeable seam lines. I fill them with a party for plastic. So, now it only remains to paint chrome again. Essential is to have a perfectly gloss black base. 
I use for this purpose Gloss Black from Mr. Color. I also tested some other lacquer paints, but Mr. Color was stay forward for spraying and the result is acceptable. I use for Chrome Finish AK Extreme Metallic. The result is similar to Alka, but with better coverage properties. Therefore, color covers small scratches. I spray color with a low pressure of 15 psi. The result is foggy immediately after spraying, but it disappears after 20 seconds. Now I try to achieve a heat stained metal effect on exhaust pipes, like in this picture of a real bike. I use transparent real color from AK. First I spray blue. I mix the color with a lot of thinner, because I want to achieve smooth transition between shades. Now I need transparent purple, but it does not exist, so I simply mix the red and blue. The most tricky and scary of the whole build was the Kawasaki black chrome finish on the fuel tank, front fender or side engine covers. The original process is mainly about chemicals, but it's almost impossible to follow the steps on my model. Interesting of that chrome is that on the sun is like a mirror and under artificial light is relatively dark. I made a lot of tests of black bases and chrome colors, and after two days of testing, I found the perfect solution. So here are the steps. I spray parts with a Tamiya X1 animal color, which is also another perfectly gloss black color and best for this technique. As you can see the result is like a black mirror. I spray small parts for the first time nicely smooth, so I didn't need polish them but I had a problem spray soft layer on the fuel tank. You can probably see a lot of imperfections. I smooth and remove dust with a smooth sandpaper. And then polish fuel tank with a polishing compound. And no more painting with an airbrush because the best black chrome I achieved with this powder from Ushi van der Rosten. I do not recommend cotton swap because it could create scratches on the surface, so instead you can use smooth makeup brushes. So application is straightforward. I apply a small amount of powder and try to overlay it across the whole surface. Even now is like a mirror, but it will be even better. When the work is done, I remove excess dust with a micro-cleaning cloth. The whole process was filmed on sunny day, so the result looks like a silver mirror. However, at the night. This photo was taken under artificial light at night. You can clearly see that the black chrome is definitely black. Just for comparison, chrome by AK and Alcat. Also, you can notice how smooth the result of powder is. I just found this very interesting, so one more part.
If you thought that the front fairing is complete, you were wrong. It requires a few layers of a clear varnish to be perfectly smooth and shiny. And as usual, more sanding and polishing. The model is almost finished, but still missing more than 40 parts, mainly with small screw heads from photo edge set. And with these steps is model finished. A lot of parts are attached only with screws, so you can disassemble model very easily. I think after Bismarck was this model the most difficult which I ever made. Especially challenge was to find out the best technique for chrome and also carbon texture was tricky. Anyway, making models in my case is mainly about searching challenges and discover new possibilities. I hope this model confirm my theory and you bring new knowledge from it. Thanks for watching and see you next time. H2R looks unnumberly like a demon with an evil soul. It is.